Hello again. Today I'm going to go over with you the template for the direct mail postcard template. Now you can use this for a gift voucher or if you want to use it as um, a general marketing piece, uh, you can do that. It's a universal design uh, template. I just gave you the bare bones um, as you can see here so that you can put in your own images, change the color, change the text put in your own logo, put in um, your own branding so that you can customize this template to fit you. So I'm going to show you how I built my pieces using these templates uh, that I create, use from, from the templates that I, that I created for you. Um, so let's get started. I have already set aside in a folder all the images I'm going to build this with. We're going to have to also use Photoshop briefly um, to edit those images in order to save it for this particular marketing piece for print. So um, I'm going to get started by showing you the basic uh, setup I have here in the program. I have my uh, tools palette right here and you have your type tool, um, rectangle tool, rectangle frame tool. Those are the ones we're going to use the most today. And here I have my swatch palette. And it comes with, uh, when you open up the program, these basic colors are already in it. And I'm going to show you how to load in your own, um, some customized uh, colors for, um, for your design so that you don't have to be stuck with just these basic colors. Over here is the Pages palette. As you can see, it gives you a quick overview of all the items you have in your document. Now in InDesign, um, which is different, that makes it different for Photoshop, is that you can have multi-pages pages within one document. Whereas in Photoshop, this is the only thing you can see. You can only, op you can only have um, one file, one image opened up at a time. Here I can have uh, this one, one file with my postcard and have multiple pages and multiple layouts for that. Um, over here, is the layers palette. I don't use this as often as I should um, because I've been using this program for so long and like unlike Photoshop you don't necessarily need the layers to, to keep designing and keep track of your things because it is already set right there for you. All you have to do is click on it and you can start changing things um, wherever you want to. But as you can see I do have the layers set out for you so when I click on it you can see in the layers palette that it's changing position as to where I have that image. Image set on each layer. Um, over here is the effects palette. This is going to be um, quite a little handy piece. This right here I have this blocks of color I have set here as an overlay. Once you see the picture come up, and I'll show you on my original design, that it's just kind of showing up and kind of floating on top of the of a picture and you can see through it. This is called an overlay and I use the effects as you can see right there to lower the opacity of it and make it transparent. So here it is as a solid solid color and I drag the opacity down to the desired um, percentage so that I can see my text clearly over my picture and I can still see the picture underneath this um, this little overlay. So that's the effects palette and how we're going to use it today. Here is the links. Um, these will show up once you start adding and, and importing pictures. I'll go back into my um, original design. You'll see I have a couple of links in there already. Um, I have this picture which shows up in this little um, in the links palette right here along with all my other images will start show up. And if I ever want to um, edit out my pictures I can go into the links palette and relink a new picture to it or I can just delete this one and put in a new one and we'll get to that later in the tutorial. Over here are my strokes palette. I have this open for anything that I want to change the um, width of my frame. Right now I have it set at two points. I can increase that to 10, take it down to 5, or back to 2 depending on the look that I want. Um, and that is basically it. Oh, also in the in the stroke palette, you can change the type of uh, frame that you want. If you just want a solid um, stroke, you can select that, or you can have um, a couple options here to change the look of your frame to a double frame, a double line frame, 
or a, uh, a triple. Also a very thin double line. It really just depends on how you want it to look. And I'm going to go back to my um, single stroke two point frame. All right. <clears throat> so those are the basics of the palettes that we're going to have open and use today. This is a, a fairly um, simplistic template for um, basically it's just for beginners, um, but advanced people can use this as well just to get you started on a design layout. And um, you can always add in uh, a lot more to these um, designs as far as you want to add in stock images, stock graphics. Um, I can show you how to do those overlays very quickly. And um, from a, a stock site that I use most often, uh, often called iStock Photography or iStockphoto.com. And we'll get to that later in the tutorial. So, all right, well, let's get started by putting in a, um, a photo on our template. I'm going to take this beautiful photo of Emily, I'm going to put it on there. So, let's click into the page one of our template and go to the page palettes. If you happen to be on another page, you can just go ahead and Go to your page palette and double click on that page. All right, so let's click on the um, the background layer and we're going to place our image. So we're going to go to File to Place and we're going to go to the folder that you have your images set in. I have mine set on my desktop for the tutorial. I'll bring this in right here. And I have it set up on my um, postcard Rick Miller template. You have a links folder set up, and I want to be able to see which images I'm looking for, so I'm going to set it as thumbnail and open up my first image. I'm going to double click or hit open at the bottom blue um, button that was there in that dialog box. Now, obviously, you can see that this picture is way too big for our frame um, to fit into our, um, our template. So what I'm going to do is um, hold down my command key and the minus symbol and zoom out so I can see my entire image and grab it, move it over so I can scale it down. So with holding down your shift key to constrain proportions, I'm going to click on the um, outside of this uh, image and start dragging it in to reduce the size to fit better within my design. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in. And the way I did that is I hit my command key and the zero button and it brought it back to full frame of the page. And then I'm going to click my command key minus so that I can reduce it to the right size so I can see the entire thing. All right. We have Emily's picture in here and you can probably tell that it's a little bit um, low resolution looking. That's because uh, InDesign does something called a preview so that you can work a little bit faster. Having it at full resolution sometimes will slow down your, your computer depending on or your program depending on how um, how uh, much memory and RAM you have within your computer, but uh, mine can handle it. I'm going to go ahead and hit view, over print preview, and it will show a high resolution image there. The, as you notice, it will also change the color of the overlay because this is more consistent with how it's going to look once it gets printed. All right, so we have our image um, put it placed in our template. As you can see, it is now um, on our links layer. And if we wanted to maybe change out this picture because you don't like it, maybe you want to choose a different one, you can click on the um, that particular image in your links layer. Go to this little icon that looks like an arrow uh, pointed down with these little lines. Click on that and hit relink. And you can put a different image in if you want. Um, I have some images already of um, another uh, client that I want to put in. And double click that and a new image pops in. But I like the one of Emily, so I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to hit Command-Z because I like that other picture. And I just undid my, my last move of putting that um, second picture in. Now I'm going to change the text. I need to go to my Type tool. It's a little T that's on your Tools palette here. And I'm going to click on the text and place the cursor in there. And I'm going to click and drag, drag to select all my text. First, I'm going to change the color to white because I think that's going to look a little bit better and uh, show up on this dark image. And I'm going to type in GIF voucher. I'm holding down the Shift key so I can get all caps and I'm typing in voucher. All right. 
Now that we have that set, you'll, some of you'll notice that um, some of these uh, letters are a little close to each other. I'm going to uh, do a little adjustment. I'm going to adjust the kerning um, between these images. So I'm going to go into that palette. So I'm going to open up my character palette, go to Window, I'm sorry, Type, to Character Styles. I'm sorry, Character. It's Command T. Sometimes I get a little confused with Photoshop and InDesign because I'm going back and forth a lot. Um, and in my character palette, I can change my fonts. I can change, um, you know, if you whatever fonts you have on your system. Click on that so you can see it. You can change it to whatever font you want, font style. And you can also change the size of it, make those that text a little smaller. Um, and now what I want specifically for this is you notice the F and the T are a little close to each other and the rest of them are a little bit further apart. I want to take that out a little bit so that it's not, it's a little more consistent with the rest of the other text. I'm going to give it more positive space rather than negative space. Negative space will just take, a, take it closer to each other. I don't want to do that. I want to brace it out a little bit more. So maybe bump it up to 25 or I can type in and make it 35. And just to give it a little even space, I think I might bump it up to 40. I think that looks a little more consistent with everything. All right. Now, say I want to change the font on here. That's very easy. Click and drag again. Or you can hit, uh, put your cursor in the middle and hit Command A, and that'll select all your text as well. I'm going to change this to maybe um, something a little bit more of a, a, a serif font. So maybe we'll go into Adobe Garamond. I can find it on here. All right, it'll be Garamon regular. And you can see that it now changes the look of that font. Or say maybe you want something a little bit more scripty. I'm going to put find my scripty font. And obviously, it doesn't look good in all caps, so I'm going to retype. I'm sorry, I'm not going to retype this. This is actually a quick little way to change it. I'm going to go up to type to change case to um, title case. And this will make the first letter uppercase and the rest of them lowercase. Gift voucher. See, it's right there. Now I can change it again. Maybe you want to change it to all lowercase. And that changes all the, all the um, text into lowercase for you. But I want to go back to upper or lower for both of those. And then I'm going to increase the size of this font. Drag it up to 72. And it may disappear because the bounding box is a little too small for that. Um, particular font. So what I did is I'm going to go back into the, go into the selection tool. You'll see the bounding box for that. Sorry, my mouse is a little crazy. Go back into the bounding box for that type and I'm just going to drag this down to open up the box a little bit more and now you can see your type. Oops. Command C to um, create a bounding box that fits your type exactly. All right. So you can also click and move this over. Um, you can move this with your mouse, or what I like to do, because I like to move incrementally, is hold down my Shift key and use my arrows to adjust um, and center my text where I want it. Now say this is still not big enough and you're not really sure um, exactly what type size you need to have it at, a quick way to increase it without having to go into the character palette is to increase the percentage size of that um, box. So I'm going to click it up to 125. And then I have to adjust the um, oh, it automatically did it for me. Usually if I hit tab, it'll do it. If I, ha um, if I go back in here, it knows that I want to adjust it, and it will do it automatically for me. So I'm going to bring it in over here and center my text with my mouse. And now I have gift voucher in a beautiful scripty font. All right, now I want to change the text over here. Right now what I have it set in is called Lorem Ipsum. It's um, commonly used by graphic designers to use as placeholder text. It's actually, a, I think it's an, a Latin poem. Um, I haven't, um, it's been so long since I had first learned about this. I'm going on probably about 15 years since I was in design school. So I can't tell you exactly what it what it says in Latin, but you can look that up if you just Google and type in lorem ipsum. It'll show a website um, where you can get this text and do a placeholder text for it. And I think it gives a, a little explanation on exactly what that po Latin poem is, or it's, yeah, Latin poem is. So anyway, uh, with our placeholder text, I want to actually put in some copy. Now, normally I type up my copy and put it in a separate text file. Um, a separate file, like I'll type it up in InDesign or I'll, 
I'll type it up in like um, another maybe a notes program right here I have notes notes program right there and um, but anyways I'm gonna just click and drag it from or copy and paste it from my previous um, design my gift voucher design so I'll show, show you how to do that I'm gonna copy select all or click and drag command C to copy or you can hit edit to copy and I'm gonna click on my um, template and I'm going to select all the text that I'm going to replace it with and I'm going to hit command V or edit to paste if you want to do that and now I have my new text in here and I'm going to set it to a different color for right now um, so that you can see the text a little bit more clearly now right now I have it set in my um, Avena or next condensed font you may choose to make it. I'm sorry, my mouse is a little crazy. I have this new wireless Mac mouse and it's very sensitive. And sometimes I click it in the wrong place and it starts making everything move all, move all over. So uh, please ignore that. And um, so I want to change, um, maybe you want to type in your text. You can always select that um, Latin, or sorry, the lorem ipsum text and just start typing in whatever you want. Um, or you can do what I do is and um, write up your text before you start designing so that you're not sitting here trying to think, oh, uh, what am I going to design? What am I going to write about? Try to work on that beforehand um, so that you can quickly move through your through designing your um, your good vouchers or your marketing pieces. All right, so I want to change the color of this this text, and I'm going to use my warm gray because it's my very light. Um, it's a very light font it's very close to it's very close to white it has a nice um we call it uh um <laughs> i can't think of the word today i'm doing so many tutorials i'm kind of losing my place here um it's got a little bit more of of a uh, uh contrast sorry that's where contrast against this dark background you want to keep your fonts light if you have dark backgrounds um if you have light backgrounds you want to pick a darker text because once these things get printed they can be difficult to read. You also want to pick a font that isn't too thin. Like this particular font has an option to make it very, very thin, a thin font. And right now I have it set at regular, but you can get ultra light and that gets really tight. And even in, on a screen, it's hard to see. And in print, your ink is going to bleed into each other, especially when you have something this thin, it'll be even thinner and it will be hard to read. You may lose text. So I would not, do not recommend ever using a font like that unless it's for you're going to make this really really big and then that um, like if you're making this that font as big as this word gift voucher and then it might work but I'm going to go back to regular and I maybe want to bear out my headlines and make these a little bit um, more of a brighter color and mix in my other brand color this really beautiful coral that I use so I'm going to make that header the coral color so I just go into my swatch palette and click on it but of course I have to have this selected in order to do that. If I don't have anything selected and I pick the core color, nothing's going to change. You have to actually specify what it is you want to change by selecting it. Now um, I want to add in my my logo. I only have I have this little placeholder thing just to show you where you would put your logo. I'm going to change that out. Um, there's two ways you can do this. You can actually open up Illustrator and copy and paste the artwork into Adobe InDesign. Or if you already have your logo saved um, like an EP, as an EPS file, because EPS is the um, as opposed to JPEG is used for printing. If you were going to put this um, you know marketing piece onto the internet, you won't need to necessarily use an EPS because you're going to have to flatten this image, save it as a JPEG, and place it on the internet. But for printing, this has to be an EPS file; otherwise, the printer won't be able to read it. It'll come up; the colors will come up weird. And it has to be set as a Photoshop EPS with a CMYK um, color. If it's an RGB, uh, because printers use um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black in order to print its actual ink, uh, RGB is not red as an ink, it's red as, as a light color, color for a computer, color for the internet. Um, so definitely have to do that. So we're going to go in, I'm going to go in and show you how to do that. But for right now, let's just copy and paste it from Illustrator. Um, sorry, 
I'm gonna sorry, I'm gonna place it. <laughs> so I go to file. Oops. We're gonna go into file to place. And I'm gonna try to find my logo on here. And I believe I have it set on my desktop. Let's see, show the portraits. Oh no, sorry, it's in my folder here. Uh, I don't have that saved on there. And logo, where do I have logo? Good. I have a PNG version of it. All right. Object. And okay, and obviously you can see within this bounty box, it's a lot bigger than it needs to be. So I need to shrink that. So I'm going to go to object to select to content. And it's going to, sorry, it's going to select only the um, content that's within that um, uh, box. So you can see it's selecting my logo. I'm going to hold down my shift key and um, drag it in so that I can reduce the size of my logo to fit within my bounding box. Okay. All right, now it's fitted in there. Looks a little low res, but that's just the preview showing up on here. And you can see and there's my logo right there. Now I'm gonna have to change that file format from PNG to CMYK and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a little bit. But just for, um, for preview purposes, I'm gonna leave it this way. Now, if I wanted to copy and paste it from Illustrator, I can open up Illustrator. Okay, take a few minutes. Okay, while that's waiting to open up, I'll show you another way. I already have a file created with my logo on it, and it's already in InDesign. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up really quick. I have other marketing pieces, I have my other postcard, I'm going to open that up, and you can see my logo's right there. I'm going to click on it, copy, click on my template, and go back in and place it Command-V. And there I have a vector version of my logo. I'm going to delete that one because I don't need it anymore. I'm going to click and drag it over here. And I think I might make it just a little bit bigger, so I'm going to click my Shift key on my keyboard, and drag it to constrain the proportions to make that logo a little bit bigger. All right, and I also want to change the color of my gift voucher text. So I'm going to click and select all of that and change it to my warm gray. Oops, didn't change color. I think I have it on the wrong. All right, I'm going to make sure that my um, foreground color is selected right now. It's on paper color. And I click my Pantone color. There we go. Now it's shifted, changed the color to my warm gray. And I think I like the um, Avenar font too, so I'm going to switch back to the Avenar font. So I'm going to click that text and select all of it and change it to Avenar. Avenar Roman. And again, the text is a little bigger than the bounding box, so we're going to make it a little bigger and it's too big for what I want it to be so I'm going to change it back to, on the character palette change it back to 40 points maybe 36 and a little bit more 48 and I want to make it lower places I like the look of that better type to case to lower good and I'm going to move it over a little bit I'm going to make my text box a little bigger because I think that it needs to be, I think I picked the wrong font for that. It doesn't look quite right. And I think it was in our medium. Yeah, looks like it was Roman. Okay, but I want to change the kerning in there because I had to change it for GIF voucher with the um, scripty font because you need those, those letters to be closer together otherwise it doesn't look like a continuous script font. I want to um, bring out the kerning a little bit, so I'm going to bring it up to 100. And I like that better. I think it's a little more prominent. It gives a, gives a little something extra. Or I can make it all uppercase. Type change case to upper. And bring the kerning back in. 200. Bring the font size down to 40. And there we go. Gift voucher as it was on our original template. All right, let me move these palettes over so you can see a little bit better the entire document. 
All right, we're running out of some space here. I'm gonna move my pages over here too. Um, maybe about right here and shrink my palette. These things are all adjustable. And just, you know, while you're in space of while you're working, sometimes you find you need a little bit more uh, of a work area. So you shrink things, move things around. You can also move these up um, to within each other and you can um, reduce them even more and then you kind of select and drag it up into each other so you can collapse all these things so that you have a larger um, artboard area to work with and if you click on them it shows up the, the the all the palettes so that you haven't lost anything they're just hiding and out of your way okay so i'll put that back over there now um I think I've gotten everything that I need for this design, this particular page. So we're going to move on to page two. Now, oh, except for I want to go over one more thing. Now, this little um, overlay area, you may find that um, depending on the the photo that you put back here, if it has a light background, if it has a dark background, you want to adjust it. You can change the color of this um, box too. Maybe you want a lighter color over it, and I'll select my warm gray because it goes with my marketing. And you can see that that text, the white text doesn't quite show on that. So maybe I'll select a darker text. Click and drag your cursor over the text to select it and make it a little darker. Okay. So I change the text to fit a lighter, um, um, a lighter color overlay. I can change the opacity of it by going into the effects. And right now it's set at 35. Maybe I want to make it a little bit more prominent bump it up to about 55 and you can see that the opacity comes up and it makes it a little bit darker of an overlay. It really just depends on one, the image that you have as the background to again, your preference. All right, so I'm gonna put it back and hit Command Z to go back a couple of spaces and put it back to where I had it before. Um, the Command Z or the undo um, feature in, in Adobe Illustrator as well as um, Adobe InDesign allows you to go back quite a few where it's Photoshop. The commands only works once and you'd have to go into a history palette in, in order to go further back. But Adobe um, InDesign allows you to go back as um, quite a few. You can go probably go back all the way to the beginning if you wanted to, but I don't want to lose all my work. Speaking of which, because we are going to be working a little bit longer in this program, at this point you're going to want to save your work so that in case something happens, your computer freezes up, or um, you accidentally hit quit, because sometimes I've done that to help my hit command W to collapse the window, I accidentally hit command Q because those two keys are closer together. I don't want that to happen to you. It's happened to me so many times. So what I want to do is start saving my work. And I also want to keep my template um, to use it again. So I want to do a save as. We're going to go to file to save as and save this um, as, I'm going to call it my gift voucher. And let's call it version one because May may come up with some other options later on. But for right now, I'm going to call it gift voucher version one. Find my direct mailer folder. Let's see, where is it? Postcard direct mailer template. I'm going to save it in there. All right. So now our work is saved and we can move on. We're going to go to page two and we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to start off with changing the color of the background. Uh, you can add a picture here if you want to again, but since we're laying pictures over them, it may not show up very well and it will look weird. You got maybe you have a, a same image of this uh, woman back here. If you have pictures over her, her face is going to get covered up, so it's not going to look quite as good. So what I have set here is a color background. And if you go back in, to, I want to show you my um, my design. I have um, use I'm using this uh, coral as my background and I added in these little extra um, color boxes because it kind of goes with my brand and I like to keep things consistent. I can also change this to the darker um, warm gray because maybe that coral is just a bit too much and I want to soften it a little bit. So I changed it to that warm gray or maybe I want to switch it out to the lighter color and make these little um, uh, graphic elements the darker gray and change my text to a darker text so that I can so I can read it. Where is that? It disappeared on me. All right, there we go. And we can change it to the coral color. So there's a lot of adjusting you can do to make this um, template fit you best. Now I'm going to go back to my original color. 
hit commands a couple times, and go back into the template. Now let's change the color of this template. I think I'm going to go with the coral because I like it. Uh, right now I have that gray set as a, a really light gray. You can see the percentage, the tint of it is lower to 50. I'm going to bring that up to 100 because I like this color at, at its full 100% tint. And I want to change out these pictures. So I'm going to go into and click on my first frame. And I'm going to go to File to Place. Now don't worry about this Your in Photo here will delete because right now that's the image that's placed in there but if I'm going to replace this and replace it that will disappear and my new image will be in its place. So I'm going to go file to place. I'm going to go into my folder that has my images on my desktop, um, postcard no, template, go into my links and I'm going to select another photo and we're going to take this image of Emily and hit select and as you can see, another large image that we need to reduce to scale in here. I'm going to bring this out a little bit more. And you can always, in Photoshop, pre-size these images to where you want them. But I'm using my high resolution images. And um, I don't want to fool with a lot of going back and forth, resizing and everything. So I'm just picking the high resolution image and I place it in here. It may make your file a little bit bigger, but it's I have never run into trouble with it being too big that I can't send it to the printer, so I don't worry about it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click and hold my shift key down on my uh, keyboard and drag in that bounding box into the frame so that I have my image um, small enough into this frame box, but not quite, I'm not bringing it in so much that I can actually see the image, because this is what happened if I made it too small. Um, now you can see my background and it doesn't fit within my frame properly. So I'm going to click on the image again using the direct selection tool. If I use the regular, um, the, um, the, the selection tool um, that's blacked out right here, and I click on something, I'm moving the whole frame. But I just want to select the picture that's in that frame, so I need to use my direct selection tool. And that's the white arrow. And click on the image, and now I'm only having the image selected within that frame box. And I'm holding down my shift key and dragging the corner out so that it fits just underneath that frame. And maybe I want her to be a little bit more centered to the top, her head right there. And I think I like it the way it looks right there. Now you see that the photo, your photo here is, is disappeared. You don't have to worry about that showing up when you're going to print. And we're going to follow the same process again. I'm going to click on the second frame box and the file to place. Put in my second image of Emily. And I believe it was, I think this will look good in the middle. Again, image is quite large. We need to zoom out by hitting Command minus. Or you can go to um, view, yeah, view to zoom out. But you can see the keyboard shortcut right there is Command minus, which I like to use. So we're going to go back in and shrink this image. You got to find the bounding box first. Go out a little bit more. Now I can see it, and I'm going to click and drag with my shift key held down, and my mouse is dragging it into the bottom right. I'm going to position it, zoom back in so I can see my file up close, and I can see it's not quite there yet. I want her a little more into the frame here, and let's see, I want to see a little more of her wrist, so I'm going to keep dragging it in, and I like that position, so I'm going to Bring it down just a little bit by hitting, whoops, did it again. Turn mouse. Go back into page two here. All right, so I'm using, um, clicked on my image and using my direct selection tool. Now I'm using my arrows to bring, on my keyboard to bring the um, image down into the frame and center it the way I want. That looks good. And again, your photo here has been replaced by this image. So we're going to, gosh, this mouse is driving me crazy. All right, now we're going to do it again. We're going to click on the final um, frame and again repeat this file to place. And I want to pick this beautiful, other beautiful picture of Emily. Again, large file, to zoom out, command minus until I see the bounding box. Hold the shift key, click the mouse in the corner, and drag up. Zoom back in, command zero and adjust the image by clicking on the direct selection tool, 
I think I want to make her a little bit bigger. Holding down the shift key, dragging the bounding box up just a little bit, arrow to nudge it over a little bit more. Again, don't want to go further than that because then you're going to see our background. It's going to be outside our, our frame. Arrow back to the right and perfect. Perfectly positioned three images. All right. Now, um, this was just a design choice for me by putting in these little graphical elements. I liked it because I think it brought the image in a little bit more. It added some more of my color. It was just a preference. It was something that I visually I liked. Say you want to put in something a little bit more uh, fancy, a little more swirly. You can go into a do um, into iStock Photo and purchase graphical elements. Maybe you want some scrolls. All right. Uh, we're going to type in into search area. I'm just going to illustrations. Um, scrolls. Oh, I think I must be spelling something wrong. And let's put in ele graphic elements. No, let's put in elements. Ah, there we go. We have some uh, little design elements in here. Um, I like these little scrolls. Let me click on this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Maybe you want some little um, images like this to kind of dress up your your design because this this is a style that fits you. You're more elegant, a little bit more classic, and this style fits you. You can buy these little elements and place them as uh, into your into your design. And for me, I'm gonna for you. I'm gonna use this example. Um, I have this little piece of my logo that I like. It's this little this little graphic that I drew um, that looks like a little camera, and I like to use this as my design element um, in my in all of my marketing. And what I do is I just copy this. I already have it in my design. I'm going to copy this graphic. Let me zoom out here because I need to select all of it and group it together so I don't lose it. Command G to group that um, all those elements to that graphic together. I'm going to copy and paste it into my design. Okay. Now say I want to put this over here in the corner and add a little element there. And I'm going to go into the effects palette and lower the opacity to 25. And now it's a screen back graphic element. Um, but right now it's placed over where my logo should be. So if I click on that, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite show up. I want to put this behind um, my logo placement, but not behind my background. So I'm going to click on the um, graphic overlay, click on my background, go to Object, Arrange, Send to Back. Now when I click on my logo, it's a little bit, a little bit more easier to select it. Oops. Again, my mouse is just a pain in the butt. So here we go, I selected my logo, but that's not really my logo, it's just the placement. But here's a graphic element. Now, you again, you can put the scroll elements over here, you can place them anywhere. Maybe you want to have a whole scroll element in the background right here. I'm just showing you basically how you would place it on there. But for my design, I didn't want it on here. All right, so I want to replace this little placeholder with my logo. So I'm going to go over here and select my logo that I had on my previous page. Uh, copy and paste it. Oops, I'm going to delete this one because I don't need it. Ah, there we go. Our mouse. And I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to place my new logo over here using my selection tool. As you can see, some of it's coral, so it looks like it's disappeared, but it is still there. So I'm going to select my warm gray and make that image all one color. And now I have a nice little overlay in my background, maybe make it a little bit bigger so it's not as distracting against my logo. And and I have my logo placed on top of it. All right. And again, I have some more uh, some more Latin text over here, but I luckily have my uh, the text I want on my marketing piece already written out for me. So I'm going to go copy and paste that wherever I have it saved. Here I have it on my previous postcard design, and I'm going to click and my on my template, select all, Command V to paste or edit to paste, and now I have my 
um, uh, con uh, contact information, um, some, Im some information about where to see my before and after gallery on my website, and my uh, phone number to call me for consultation, and anything else you might want to say to to drive people home in as a call to action to people so that they say, hey, I'm going to give her a call or hey, I'm going to look at her website. I want to check her out because I love these pictures and I want to look like that. So there we go. That is just a basic uh, tutorial on how to change your design templates. I have a few other options in here for another, um, another side A for your postcard. You can put in another picture, a vertical picture this time because this is for vertical, um, vertical design. Place your logo, change the color, change the text. You can make that your gift voucher or you can make it a, um, a just a basic um, marketing piece. Here I have it as, let me zoom back out, um, Beauty and Glamour. Right? It's more of a, um, a marketing piece to say this is what I do. This is, this, this is something to evoke an emotion out of somebody, not a gift voucher. And it's just showing a basic idea of how much I cost, where to find me, and a few more images and information on my gallery. You can use this design for anything. It doesn't just have to be gift vouchers. So I have option two and a backside. And then I put in a bonus design because I just really like my this layout right here. So I added in a bonus design for you. So now you have three options for a back, two options for a front using a vertical or a horizontal image. So go ahead and have fun with Adobe InDesign and make that design your own. Enjoy.